Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of New York and London sugar markets. Ice New York raw sugar. The key recent pattern here has been the late May to late August descending expanding wedge pattern. Currently 23 and 3 quarters on top to off the bottom of my daily chart. You can see it clearly highlighted in blue on my daily chart. The last two weeks have seen a break up and out of this descending wedge pattern, as well as a move up and over all the moving averages, bar the long moving average, which is currently at 22.73. This is because it's well below. Prices also utilize the previously highlighted neckline, currently at 23.22, of the big old August to November 2021 move. Yes, back in 2021 as a move. And that used that as a springboard for this move up over the 50% Fibonacci line of the March to April move at 23.72, as well as the July 2012 high at 24 even, and most recently over the 38.2% absolute Fibonacci line at 24.88, and the April to date downtrend currently at 25.13. This last move leaves the door open for the action over the last two weeks to be a possible bull flag, with a potential target in the 27 and a quarter area. To reach up there, the market has a small number of seemingly weak resistance, but which in reality have shown themselves to be quite good at capping the market in June, March and April. These are the notable March and February 2021 highs at 26.20 and 26.78 respectively. On top of these are the potential target areas overhead for the descending expanding wedge pattern of a primary target X in the 27.95 area and a secondary harder to reach target x1 in the 28 and three quarters area ice europe white sugar whilst there was no weekly key reversal up here in london as there was in the new york contract there was still a significant move higher over the last two weeks indicated by the gapping action made over two weekends ago the base of the move higher was a congestion formed since late July to the end of August, supported by the slowly rising short medium moving average, and that's currently at 6.8320, and the medium moving average currently at 6.8920, with the help of the March 2012 high at 6.7490 and congestion at 6.8590. Helped by all these efforts, prices punched up through the upper trend line of the late May to late August descending expanding wedge pattern, and that's currently at 698.5. This gave some potential targets on the top side for such a pattern. But before I go into these, I would like to explore another pattern that has been developing and in which the upper trend line is also vital. You see, the upper trend line is also the neckline of an out of place late May, late August reverse head and shoulders pattern. This also has potential topside targets, but the two things have been unusual two things have been unusual about this pattern. Firstly, it's in the wrong place. And by that I mean it was to be a common reverse if it was to be a common reverse head and shoulders bottom, then it should have been created further down, which it hasn't. And that led me to question the pattern. Seems as I was not the only one, as the second shoulder in formation did not have a clean move higher after fulfilling its creation, but instead created a further extension or a handle to this second shoulder, constructed as it was throughout August. This is what makes me think that others who follow technical analysis were biding their time here and watching to see if the reverse head and shoulders pattern really was a bottom and not a continuation pattern. The market is not completely out of the woods as yet, but it has made a good start. Now, last week, this for a reverse head and shoulders, but we could have a, uh, a good start last week. This for a reverse and shoulder bump, we would have a primary target X in the 769 even area, with a secondary harder reach target X1 in the 797.30 area. Meanwhile, we would also have a primary target X2 for the descending expanding wedge pattern in the 75420 area and a harder to reach secondary target X3 up in the 68490 area. White premium spread. 
we are just about three quarters away into 2023 and this chart is still one of the busiest and most colorful charts I have. Many things are still going on all at the same time. Okay, so I've previously spoken about two big picture items here seen on this weekly chart. We have the recurring big old picture items seen here in this weekly chart. We have the recurring big old bullish Andrews pitchfork from 2019 to 2021, highlighted in dark blue on my weekly chart. This is still very valid with the market at the moment in between the lower time below, currently at 110 and a quarter, and the middle time above, currently at 184 and a half. I have said this so, so, so many times before, and I will repeat it again today. This pitchfork, despite being breached in the past, still continues to show the overall major bullish angle of attack of this market. Next, we have an ascending expanding wedge pattern highlighted in bright red trend lines and above the current market. This was formed between mid-April to late November, uh, and that's the, the last year, and that's currently uh, 2.01 even to right off the top of my weekly chart. To me it was, and still is, not the best looking of such wedge patterns, but it is also still out here, despite being tested as recently as mid-April this year, and it comes all the possibilities such a pattern invokes. And the most recent activity had been the market's construction since 2022 of a lopsided diamond pattern. I drew my initial diamond top here 11 weeks ago, which I have finessed since. And you can see it highlighted in dark green on my daily chart. Initially, it looked like prices had broken out of the bottom of this pattern, long enough for me to even set up some potential targets below. However, this was a false break, and the break now looks to be on the upside. Five weeks ago. Thus, we now have some pretty extraordinary targets uh, on the top side. Much harder uh, initial primary target X in the 260 air and a half area. And the secondary harder to reach, much harder to reach target X1 in the 300 and a quarter area. I'll just let that sink in for a moment or two. Meanwhile, let's look at the nearby action and opportunities. Now, that continues to be dominated by the overhead congestion between 162 and three quarters and 164 and three quarters. And some 2011 base congestion between 173 and three quarters to 175 even. Meanwhile, below we have some support between 152 and three quarters to 155 even. And then the rising short medium moving average currently at 147 and three quarters. And the medium moving average currently at 141 and three quarters. Additionally, we have the support of the neckline currently at 155 even of the June 21 to May 2022 reverse head and shoulders bottom, which is highlighted in pink on my daily chart. Now on to the final bit. 12 weeks ago, I drew both a bullish Andrews and a bullish shift pitchfork for the August 2021 to February 23 action. And I've chosen, yet again, not to highlight either of them as they still neither add nor subtract from the current situation. Although the lower time of the bullish Andrews pitchfork, currently at 136 and a half, has shown some promise as a potential support, and we are not too far away from the middle time above, currently 182 and a half, of the untested bullish shift pitchfork. Now, I will keep an eye on both of these, and I suggest you may wish to do the same. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.